Welcome back to the second episode of the Battle Hawks Blitz. My name is my name is Kenny, and oh boy, do we have a lot of big news for you this week. You know, we just had that big old the big old super draft, and we are we also have the collective the the collective bargaining agreement and. The, and the coach went on went on several interviews. Man, do we have a lot to talk about? So hey, let's just go ahead and and jump straight into the news. Take it away. Full dispersal draft wrapped up on Monday with some surprising moves and intriguing picks. The draft had three phases. In the first phase, each team could protect 42 players from their current rosters. In the second mm -hmm. phase, teams could draft from their own conference. And in the third phase, the Super Draft, teams could choose from any remaining player. The Battlehawks made some bold moves in the draft, picking up 63 players in total. They are expected to fill the remaining 12 spots from free agency, which includes anyone cut from an NFL contract. The Battle Hawks bolstered their offense by drafting Jacquard Pearson and Blake Jackson, two of the most explosive receivers in the league. They also re-signed Hakeem Butler and Darius Shepard, giving the team four out of the top six receivers in the league. On defense, the Battle Hawks added some much needed speed and strength with players like Chris Payton, Jones, Quinterio Cole, Anthony Siofi, and Pita Talmol Penu. They also improved their offensive line with some big, strong guys for the trenches. With free agency underway, there's still some big names on the board that have not found a home. Nate Meters, Jeff Bidette, Braden Silvers are just some of the stars that are still available. There is a lot of talent left in the pool, and they all deserve a shot. Teams have until February 26th to finalize their rosters and get to 75 players. We at the Battlehawk Blitz will be keeping a close eye on how things unfold by then. Stay tuned for more updates and analysis on the UF Dispersal Draft. Uh, thank you very much, very much, Dan the Man. So, man, did we get some pretty big, we get some pretty big name signed on here. you already seen about the, the jockey person and the Blake Jansen, like, oh my goodness. And we just recently, we signed, we signed Darius Shepard. He's the one that we are watching, we are watching some, some highlights of right now. But not only that, like, and the the coach focused very heavily on revamping all pretty small defensive, all pretty small defensive team that we had last year, and and he realized that our defense just was not up to the, to the same standard as, as the offense was. So he went out and picked up some of the, of the fastest people to, to, like, to ever play in the, Uf, in the UFL. He also picked up several big boys up in, up, up, uh, up in the, those trenches. So, man, he, I think he picked up some very good players. So, you Battlehawks fans, you should be, you should be very happy. But there will be more on that in the future um, when when we at the Battlehawks Blitz when we break down uh, when we break when we break down position by posi by position we will get we will get much further much further in depth on each position and we will predict uh, predict on on who's gonna make the final the final the, the final 50 the only glaring concern on and all on the Washington is the um 
is the fact that that we have that we have that we have no kickle and we have no long snapple. I fully expect that we're going to pick up one of those in the next couple of days, and I would not be surprised if it's the exact same that we that we had last year. So I'm sure the that the coach will get that figured out. We also had one other big piece of news, and that is the collective bargaining agreement. In other news, the USL Players Association announced the details of the player contracts for the upcoming season on Monday. The new deal has received mixed reviews from the players who are unhappy with the modest pay raise from $5,350 to $5,500 per week. However, we at the Blitz think that the deal has some positive aspects, especially regarding the injury and inactive pay. Players who end up on injured reserve will still get their $400 weekly housing allowance. They will also get the full inactive pay of $2,500 instead of the meager $700 they got last year. The league is showing some care for its players, which is commendable. The deal also includes a concussion protocol and an increase in the training staff. The league wants to make sure that the players are healthy and safe throughout the season. The deal also allows the players to participate in any non-competing leagues in the off-season. This is not confirmed yet, but it is likely to mean any league that does not confirm any league that does not clash with the use of schedule. Another notable feature of the deal is the severance fund of $250,000. It is not clear how this will work, but it is good to see the league setting aside some money to support the players when they're not playing. The top performers will also get a bonus for winning the in-season awards, such as Player of the Week and Buff P. This is a big step forward for the players and the league. We expect the next collective bargaining agreement to be even better, but first, the league needs to turn a profit. Yeah, and and so and so like Dan the man mentioned that there has been several players that have n that have not been super excited for this n for this n new contract. I, I believe it is because ev because everyone was told that that with this module. It is going to it is going to bring more money, more money to the to the to the players. I believe I believe since the since the majority of the players are 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 young guys um that they were really just thinking it is it is though it is going to be an increase in the, the into the active into the active schedule active schedule per week but, but the but the combined league they have made some they made some very important some very important changes you know like like it was like it was mentioned that if you end up on injured injured resolve you're going to end up getting the $2500 a week instead of the measly, the measly, the measly, the, the measly 700. And the, and the other big important thing is they now, is they now have a, a baseline, a baseline testing in order to clear a, a con a concussion protocol it is it's the exact same thing as they as they, they have in the national football league and th and this is the best way to protect the, these e to protect these young players but 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 there is one key thing that was mentioned in the CBA in the collective bargaining ag ag agreement fact sheet is that let's find the word it says about the con about the concussion 
the con the concussion protocol. It is 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 that the players will receive two weeks of active pay, um, and 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 while they are in that that concussion protocol, that that means that they will not. Be they will not be they will not be they will not be active on game day, but they will still be making just as much money as if they if they were active. I think I think that's a major thing. The other major thing is that the active rosters, like like the, like the minimum active roster, has. Been increased to forty-two players, and the and it is expected that the that the teams are going to have to have roughly fifty players total, which means that this seventy-five player training camp roster, which they did mention that this is a one-time thing, is going to get re is going to get re reduced. Down, and about 100 players are going to be left with that without a job after training camp, which, 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 which honestly does kind of suck. Because to give somebody that kind of hope and then just get rid of them, no, I'm not a huge fan of that. Of that, but hey, but it over. But over, but overall, I say, I say, it is it is a it is a good agreement for the players and a good agreement for the teams. We can f fully ex we can fully expect the we we fully expect next year's next year's contracts. Um, uh, 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 um, to include a big old pay raise, but the league needs to prove that it can be that that it can become a profitable, even if it's not even if it's not profitable th th this year. They need to prove that eventually. That they can make they they can make money on this. I would I would like eventually, like for the spring league, to have a salary cap, but I don't think that's going to happen. Like, like for at least a, a half a decade, but. We do have we do have one more bit of one more bit of news, so let's just let's just go ahead and and jump into that. This has been a very busy week for Coach Best. He appeared on several local Stooley sports shows over the last few days. During these interviews, we learned a few key details about this upcoming season. He confirmed that league will use the more standard USFL style of kickoffs opposed to the XFL. Coach Becht clarified that the playoffs this year will consist of the winners of each conference as well as the top two teams based on standings. He stated with the new rules that the Battlehawks would have made the playoffs last year. When asked about how he feels the draft went, he said we got every player that we studied and looked at mm -hmm. and thought that would fit us. He later went on to add that he is looking at a few prospects on the defensive line, running back, and wide receiver. Ooh, Coach Beck appeared on KSD5 in St. Louis and had this to say about the quarterback situation. Quarterback room, you know, AJ obviously, you know, the original plan for AJ was, you know, get him to convince him to play with the Battle Hawks. And, you know, he wanted to get back in the league. He wanted to get that chance. So he, he, he did both of those things. He took care of business. He did his part, came into the league, was a really good quarterback, got to go to the Bengals, 
active roster, all those things were great. So, so now it's just, okay, what are we going to do this year? Uh, I want all those guys back. You know, Nick Tiano won us a game against Vegas. We really like him. We think he's a starter in this league. Manny Wilkins, our third guy last year, we think he can win in this league. So, again, there's going to be competition across the board. Uh, everybody's going to have to earn it, and we'll know that quarterback room, what that'll look like here in a couple weeks once we, you know, AJ's taking some time with his family. We can start talking about, like, what that looks like. Uh, but regardless who's playing quarterback, we feel we like our room from last year. A lot of teams added some new pieces. Uh, you know, we have consistency. We like what we got. Another year in the system, guys get better. We, we think that'll be uh, be well. Well, so there, there you have it, you know. So, man, he, like, like he, like he keeps teasing this. As he says that we have three people in our quarterback room, and 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 all three of them can be be starters in this in this league. And as you heard him, as you heard him, as you heard him speak, he just keeps speaking about AJ McCarron. Um, uh, I'm coming back to the St. Louis Battle Hawks. So, uh, so I would almost say it is about ninety percent that we will see. We will see AJ Mc, AJ McCarron back under center. Number ten making his wheat turn. Uh, um. I I don't quite know why he he as and just came out and said it. I can speculate it could have something to do um um with his with his with his Cincinnati Bengals with the Cincinnati Bengals Bengals contract as he might not have been officially released after his after his one year contract or he could be speaking to them about potentially coming back on the active roster next year um which would make him ineligible like to actually play if he has a contract um, with the nfl but but there's a lot of other big stuff that he was saying like he mentioned uh about the the Kickoffs all go into the standard kickoff. I think I think that's a I think I think that's a great move. I think the best way for the spring league to be super competitive is to have very similar wars um, to college and national football league. You don't want to make you don't want to have too many big changes that just confuse the fans as much as everybody would everybody wants the xfl extra point wars to be back i would be interested to, to see if they if they make any any changes but guess we will wait to find out on that and one thing that he, that that he has made sure to mention in almost every interview is that the St. Louis Battlehawks and the St. Louis Battlehawks fans are the number one fans in the United Football League. Um, he has mentioned that the league that the the league is holding the Battlehawks up to the gold standard of uh, of uh, of venues, as in we got the best stadiums, we got the best fans. Like like we show up every single every single week in order to support our St. Louis battle. Battle Hawk. So I am glad that we're getting the the recognition that we deserve on that. But you know, hey, we just covered a a, a lot of news there. Like there was a lot of changes 
There was a lot of new players. Man, this was an exciting couple of weeks. But we have some very ex ex exciting weeks, exciting weeks coming up here. Because, like I mentioned before, that we are gonna we're gonna start going. We're gonna start going position by position by position, and we and we have the schedule that 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 is expected to be released. In the next couple of, in the in the in the next in the next couple of weeks, and we have, and we have to figure out what the UFO what the UFO war book is going to look like. We have to figure out. We got to figure figure out who all of our assistant coaches are going. to to be like man we have so much more news that is going to be coming out about St. Louis about our battle hawks be sure to follow me follow me on twitter and and that's where you're going to get the the, the most the, the most up to date news. I am Kenny UFM on Twitter, and be sure to like and subscribe on the on the United Football Media, because boy, do we have a lot of good content that is that that is coming up. Like like we have a new. A new debate show that is going to be releasing like extremely soon, and we have a team by team. We have team by team coverage each and every week on the United Football Media YouTube channel. So, until next time, my guys, I will catch you next time. <laughs>